Here we go. So welcome back, everyone. My name is Avin Reddy. And here we are with another live session with an industry expert. So as we are doing from a long time, we have take, we have done a lot of different sessions, uh, maybe Hadoop or uh, testing. And this time, we are going for a trending topic, which everyone wants to know about. There were a lot of questions regarding this particular topic on this channel. Yes, I'm not into machine learning, but but people are asking me all about machine learning. So this Naveen was not able to answer your question, and that's why we have another Naveen who will answer all your question on machine learning. Uh, so initially, we'll start with uh, with some topic. We'll talk about machine learning. OK, I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, we have an expert to talk about it. Uh, so we'll talk about machine learning, deep learning. And then at the end, we'll have your QA, which is question answers. So I know you have a lot of questions to uh, you have a lot of questions with you and you want to know all the answers but don't worry we'll try to answer as much as possible uh, so today we have an industry expert on machine learning or you can say in general ai and name is navin manaswi uh, we know each other from a long time yes in uh, somewhere between we were not able to communicate properly but now we are back uh, so navin is working in ai field from a long time in fact i know him way before he got into ai uh, he was into some other thing. And I was really excited to always uh, get huge amount of knowledge from him. Doesn't matter, is it from science, physics, and now it's time for AI. Uh, so Navin is worked from a long time. He's an author as well. Uh, currently, I got his book, finally. And I started with that book. It's an amazing book. You can you should, you should uh, look at it that way as well. Uh, so Navin, welcome to the, or Navin Manaswi, welcome to the platform. Yeah, thank you very much, Navin Reddy. It's a pleasure uh, coming to coming on board and just listening to you, listening uh, and just trying to get the get, get the questions from the audience. It's my pleasure to share my insights and knowledge about AI, data science, machine learning, and deep learning. Uh, thanks for joining, Naveen. So it's all yours. Uh, you can share your huge amount of knowledge with us. People are striving to get that knowledge. Thank you very much. So here we go. OK, I can see myself. <laughs> yeah. Now you can see the screen, yes? Yes. OK. So hi, I'm Navin Manaswi. Uh, I am published author, AI architect, ex-chief data scientist and guest faculty at uh, IIT KGP uh, for AI course. So today we will talk about data science, machine learning, deep learning, and its applications. Uh, in the retail area, telecom area, health healthcare area, marketing, fintech, medical imaging, and autonomous vehicle, smart car. So we'll focus on uh, applications and uh, how we do it. So. So this is my book, Deep Learning with Applications Using Python. It has a uh, deep learning uh, frameworks like TensorFlow, Keras, and how to build the image classification task, and how to uh, work on a face detection and all. So we'll discuss later on also. So data scientist is a sexiest job of 21st century. So it has been coined as a sexiest job of 21st century. And you know that uh, you will want to join this field, join this title, join this area for mining data. So why this field uh, emerged? So it's not like it's a luck. It's something like it was required. Suppose uh, 20 years, like 10 years back, uh, like before uh, 2000, we have an era of databases. We used to have databases of Oracle and this and that. We built huge data till 2010. But now, once we have system of records as a databases, what is the next stage? Next stage is to use those data for intelligence, to understand customers, to understand their behavior, understand their liking, and creating the recommendation for the customers. So there are many huge cases, you know, uh, to use the data system of records for intelligence, and we will discuss everything in detail today. Uh, data science is nothing but the mix of, you know, you need to know a little of math and stats, you need to know computer science, like uh, programming and all, you need to know the business uh, you know, knowledge, like telecom vertical, or retail vertical, or fintech vertical. You must be knowing what are the business problems, how they operate, how they work, and all those things. 
so you must be aware of programming plus little maths plus business insights so in some uh, data science is a multiple like multidisciplinary area we are we try to understand the, understand the actual phenomena with the help of stats data analysis machine learning and the, and the similar fields so let's take example of retail and the supply chain management in retail we know that uh, in retail we focus on the customer uh, transaction behavior we focus on the customer segmentations we group them so that we can send the send them the right sms right recommendations when you go to the uh, flipkart or amazon when you buy something you always see the you know uh, right side you, you see also some new items no those items are like cross sell strategy or upsell strategy it means they understand that key you may like this also right so that you can buy uh, those items as well so to lure you to attract you to buy more items to the new items they have a strategy and that strategy based on the data science machine learning so they use a lot of maths you know uh, to understand the behavior of, of customer and based on that they give you the personalized recommendations personalized choices you uh, you are in bangalore or you are in bombay or you are in uh, bay area based on your locations based on your transition behavior on the on the amazon they give you the recommendations accordingly so all about uh, data science is, is is like a we'll focus here uh, demand forecasting that is a key part of the supply chain management so any supply chain management company like coca cola pepsi or or any kind of company who focus on the supply chain management the demand forecasting is a key area if you know that uh, how much items would be sold next month or next week in in mumbai in in hyderabad in in bangalore then you can really manage your inventory nicely you can you can optimize your sale you can increase your sale so that's why we we focus on the demand forecasting and we also focus on the uh, coupon redemptions uh, predictions uh, recommendation engine inventory optimizations transport optimizations so we focus on many things and that only happens once you know data science machine learning so those things are very much required to really increase your sale increase your business that's why data science is a is a re, uh, really required thing in the market it is highly required to improve the business to improve the sales and uh, and the profit margin so retail like you know that we have a fund of chatbot we create chatbot because customer have some complaint they can really write complaint and get respond run time we have social media analysis we can understand the customer like customer reactions to the product or features like they like the new new kind of uh, pepsi product or not so they can write on a twitter or facebook so we understand those kind of you know uh, review as well and account suppose you go to the store they also know that you by your face you are happy or not happy how many people are coming to the store and going out of the store and all so they they use those kind of face detections face uh, face analysis to understand the customer customer response you know customer liking uh, a number of visits per day uh, per weekend per weekday per hour like your, your gender profile of your customer and all so they use lot of insights and that is all based on machine learning and deep learning so we will figure out like how the machine learning is playing uh, playing the role in this kind of task but they are like huge cases in retail areas like we also have a quality and compliance issue so we want to manage it automatically uh, earlier we used to have big team who under who try to see the quality and compliance issues manually but now we want to automate those things and for that also we need data science deep learning automatic bill and check clearance so earlier we used to have a human being human beings to understand the check like this check has this name this amount this bank account and all so now we don't need all the human human work in this space we just have our deep learning applications which can really understand where is the account number what is the account number what is the name of the person how much is the amount and they can really transact the bill simple so we can also we have a smart vendor and supplier management so we can understand the documents of the vendors we can really classify them how good they are which kind of which kind of work they do and all how old they are 
so we can really understand the documents uh, of the vendors and then then uh, understand their you know their talent or their you know usefulness our for our work with the smart monitoring and the security management so like cameras are there so camera can camera can take the uh, views of the customers or people moving in the store and then run time it can predict some something wrong happening or not wrong happening uh, some people may be doing something wrong thing in, in run time so we can really stop some kind of you know bad happenings in the store in the mall in, in any kind of you know premise so like intelligent and the automated uh, customer care like you know already like every site nowadays have a chatbot they try to respond to the customers emails customer respond customers questions customers you know complain so that is a very much powerful thing because that will really increase your customer acquisition uh, you can acquire more customers per month you can you can help the customers in in many ways you can really retain them also in a big way so that's why every company wants to have chatbot on their sites and all thanks to deep learning which can allow all these things uh like you already we discussed that key customer segmentation so suppose earlier we used to have very much simple segmentations like okay based on the age or sex uh or income we just classify you know in a way key they can be six groups in six groups in the customers and we send sms roughly you know for six segments but now data science allow you to have 100 segments meaningfully you can create the meaningful segmentations meaningful groups and then you can send right sms right earlier we used to get very rough sms ki buy this beer or buy this you know cup which i don't like at all so if they really classify a uh, segment a group customers nicely they can really send the right sms they can really manage their campaign that new campaign very well because they are finding out the right segments for the right kind of product or feature uh like like upsell and the cross sell strategy so i i told you like on the flipkart or amazon and other sites you know that even you buy something they try to show you something new item also that means you they are trying to give you the cross sell opportunity and upsell opportunity it means you buy something you want they will show you something higher uh, price item as well they will sell something which is nearly close to the item so this kind of strategy also can be done through the machine learning uh and let's try to smart churn analysis so in telecom world people leave every month you know they leave jio they go join the vodafone they leave vodafone join some other company so to retain the customers they need to understand why customer leave and before they leave they want to give them some offers you know that kind of kadas can be done through the machine learning and deep learning uh social media analysis we you know already we follow the users and linkedin and facebook we understand their behavior and then we try to you know uh, understand the customer response to the new product new features and then we can manage our uh, manufacturing or we can really optimize our manufacturing accordingly smart vendor and uh, it's already discussed it like we can really understand the documents of the vendors and document understanding can be done through the deep learning and then we can take decisions run time directly so telecom uh, the same telecom has the same kind of you know applications the way we have in retail also so we can have a chatbot in, in we can have a cross sell and option opportunity in, in telecom also like jio or vodafone we can also have a smart analysis we can have a customer happiness index and all we can do the similar thing also in telecom so it's similar thing so many industry have very similar applications and everything can be done through the ai so let's go into uh, go into uh, this machine learning part what is machine learning so machine learning the name itself says machine is learning so it means machine is learning from the data or experiences so uh, suppose a store manager who managed the store for 10 years he know know how customer you know behaves or how customer likes some new things how customer can be you know uh, can be uh, can be, how he can sell more things to the customers so the store manager gets some kind of intelligence they they use some kind of you know uh, strategy like okay cross sell strategy they, they adopt 
they they start they start making some strategy to increase their sales now we don't need sales uh, store manager we just need data of last 10 years last 5 years and those data can tell us you know what how we can manage the store how we can increase our sale how we can increase our profit margin as well so that thing now we don't domain experts may not be required for everything now once we learn from the data we will automate we can we can create the intelligence and automate many things in the real life for like example so machine learning mostly is like uh, only three tasks mostly first is the classification it means we 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 just say what is the class like suppose you get a one email now email is automatically told that this email is a spam or this email is not a spam right so classifying email run time without manual you know reading that is called you know classification we classify automatically right like you are saying this customer will buy this product or not yes or no so we can really predict some class that is the classification second is regression which means we predict the numbers like predict the sales next week numbers you no know, next week next month or next day clustering the grouping so customer segmentation is one example of clustering so these are three main tasks which we do in machine learning so any question anyone please uh, feel free to ask okay simple ml model so, so simple like we know already y equal to you know uh, wx plus b so we we try to uh, we fear only one x one feature x is feature and y is a target so if you want to know y in terms of x we try to we know that y equal to wx plus b now we, we don't know w and b we don't know the the slope and the y coefficient so we try to know from the data points so how we find the w and b we first find the loss the cost like difference between the your line and the point and that difference can be minimized and when you minimize the, the distance between the data points and the line you will get the correct w and correct b value and that y equal to w plus b is the model the uh, data science model machine learning model so y equal to w x plus b is a basic machine learning model that is being used for long time in the market but now we will come to the high five five thing also in the market so like one thing also is a decision tree so in decision tree we try to divide based on some node and, and finally we some we classify or we get the numbers at the root level like suppose you know already that key we want to know whether uh, rainfall happen or not happen based on many other features so this is also old way of uh, predicting the class now we also have advanced way also of doing the same thing so classification problem happens you know in all industry insurance retail smart home industrial iot precision agriculture supply chain management digital marketing healthcare autonomous vehicle like whether the image has a cat or not whether the image has a bus or not whether the whether the uh, patient has a cancer or not Whether the customer will click or not. So there are so many applications. No, so it all belongs to the classification problems. Now, why machine learning matters? Because machine learning, once we have system of uh, records, uh, we have our databases and all. What we will do with the databases? We need to use the data for intelligence to understand the customers, customer behavior. You know. So that's why we we really it matters if you really understand customer you can really sell a lot simple uh, that's like basic thing for machine learning you know rise in the market and nowadays you know there are robotics and all so we are trying to uh, do some basic tasks by the robot also as well we are building the you know uh, game game agents which can be done run time so you can, you can you can play against the chess player of uh, ml type as well now we have two class of machine learning mostly one is uh, uh, supervised learning in uh, supervised learning we have a y and x y the target x is a feature right y the target x is a feature so we want to note target as a function of features 
it means y is a target and x is a feature so we want to know function like how y depends on the x like in the last slide we have seen that y equal to wx plus b that is again a function that it means like y is a function of x so that is the aim of the exercise we want to know the profit in terms of store area and the number of staff so we get some kind of plane right so we get the 1d 2d 3d 4d 5d 6d 100d so we can have n dimensional feature as well but target is only one and target can be a class or a number so that comes under the supervised learning so we take the input from input we get the features and then features we have a label also Fe label means target so features and target will give you the machine learning model like y equal to wx plus b and once you know w and b you can use for the new x so if you get a new x you can tell what should be the y as simple as that so this this diagram show the same thing i think it's very clear in one dimensional feature we have a simple graph in two dimensional feature we will have plane in 3d we can have three dimensional also so we can have in dimensional feature as well but target is only one now we have a second thing that is called on supervised learning it means we don't have a y at all we don't have a target at all we just have a x x1 x2 x3 x4 so now now this is we suppose you want to reduce dimension you suppose you have 100 features right now out of 100 there would be some unrequired unwanted feature as well so we want to create the right features that is called dimensionality reductions we reduce dimensions we create five meaningful uh, uh, features out of 100 features that can be done in this way also customer segmentation we just group customer based on the customer features like their income their age amount of transaction and all we don't need y at all we just need x x1 x2 x3 and uh, now we uh, now deep learning is a subset of machine learning deep learning is a copy of human brains so this is a subset of the machine learning that is based on understanding and copying the brain networks architectures for all the ml tasks like image classification you know a uh, speech speech classification or speech recognition or face recognition face detection so whatever you can think about you know uh, complex tasks in the in the image in the face in the speech in the text all those complex tasks mostly uh, are done in deep learning so the we have a nodes like the way we have a neurons uh, human brain have neurons so we have artificial neurons now so artificial neurons these nodes are arti one two th these nodes are artificial neurons and and we we link the weight to that so the weights can be tuned here so what you see the lines here these lines are this uh, these lines are like a weight value so w1 w2 w3 w4 so the weight can be tuned as per the image to uh, uh, target suppose you want to say whether this image has a cat or not right so the, the answer is yes or no simple so the, this is a classification problem the image is the input and the output is yes or no so we take from image we take the pixel values from pixel value are the features and those features we have to map it onto the yes or no finally y is 0 or 1 y is a function of all the pixel values so y is a function of all the pixel values so we are doing in a, this kind of uh, style the smart monitoring and the security management like all time you see the cameras so camera can see you and they can tell you that you are a human being or you are your name is Manish or whatever your name is some XYZ and uh, so or there is a cat or there, there is uh, some dog moving around or there is some 
this table there so they can the image can the image classification can tell you about the image what image has as such so deep learning applications we know already that the face uh, when you upload photo on a facebook it can tell you the for the this photo belong to you or your friend or your father or your, your brother and all that is the deep learning applications face uh, recognition we also have object recognitions speaker identification who is speaking also we can figure out speech to text text to speech face detections so there are many applications in deep learning and here we have a same thing we have a, some features so image has a pixel as a features sound has some other features as well text has the the words features right so everything you go it imagine any, anything like your your face uh, your image your speech uh, your text everything has a feature now we just map these features onto the class mostly uh now we have nlp uh, nlu which understand the understand the documents uh, which classify the document as well a language translator google already has hindi to english hindi to marathi marathi to this that so we already translated in the google chatbot and document summarizations so there are so many deep learning applications and industry is using in a big way and we need more guy in the market that's why i'm appealing everyone please read about machine learning and deep learning join the verticals join the industry they are waiting for a big you know big crowd and waiting for the huge number of persons to join and solve many problems of industries the autonomous vehicle is one of the best thing in the market right now you know the way when you drive a car you know that this lane is a left lane this lane is a right lane so you know or you and you may know but how much you can know uh, that is now see this is also deep learning application see they are really classifying the segmenting that this is the left lane this is the right lane this is the car this is the second car and all so this is the deep learning applications we call it semantic segmentations so this will give intelligence for driving the car so any smart car need to know where is the car or next car where is the human being traveling where is the left lane where is the right lane now deep learning can do run time it's like human being that is the power of deep learning so uh, in this in my book basically already we have covered basics of tensor flow this is the best uh, framework in the market understanding and working with the keras multi layer perceptron is a basic uh, neural network model Re regression to the mlp in tensor flow uh, regression to mlp in keras cnn cnn in tensor flow cnn in keras cnn mostly used in the image classification problems rn and lstm speech to text and text to speech developing chatbots and face detection and face recognition in this book we have covered everything we also have a github you can follow the code as well and thank you very much navin for giving me the opportunity of uh, sharing the insights how we can take question answer as well so i'm passing uh, passing to uh, navin oh finally after a long uh, interesting session on machine learning there are so many things that were new to me as well here i have done some research on machine learning but not this much uh, so that's great navin for the insights uh, okay so now it's time for some questions and i guess i can't see you navin uh, if you can share your face yeah okay okay great uh, so navin can you see the questions on the chat uh, yeah not on the hangout see. but on youtube or do you want me to share the questions with you okay let me try the questions on the screen yeah so the youtube link which i've shared with you okay okay great so in fact yesterday we went live on this channel there was some flickering happen i'm using the same uh, webcam now maybe something has solved we have changed the flick, uh, the hertz rate so the card is good this time okay sorry okay uh uh can you just type here a question that same question which is asked or in case sure maybe i will share, i should share the link with you on the chat window just hit that link a link and you will see the questions or maybe i will read out some questions which i can see here is that fine if i read out the questions yeah 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 
Okay, so the first question, let me just pick up randomly here. Uh, okay, so it is from Balaji, and the question is, is Python a natural choice for machine learning and deep learning? Yeah, Python is a, is a best choice right now for machine learning and deep learning. Earlier, R was very powerful, but I think for the last uh, two years, Python has really taken the edge, and it's the best, uh, I think, uh, medium for practicing the machine learning and deep learning. And it has support from uh, many you know, researchers. It has the best libraries in terms of all this NLP, computer vision, task. So you can rely on Python. This is the best way of uh, you know, practicing or learning or doing the machine learning and deep learning. OK, great. Uh, that's why we have this entire series on Python available on this channel. You can just start with that, and then you can jump into machine learning and uh, deep learning. In fact, we have a second question here, which is, again, related to this one. And the question is, what is a learning path? So let's say if you want to get into machine learning, uh, what is a learning path? How, how should they start? And then what's the next level? Yeah, I think see, whatever is all about like your uh, background. Suppose you have been doing databases earlier. So it's like there are many ways to join the machine learning world. There are many ways, by the way. So if you if you have been good in databases, you can learn a little bit of math and stats and start uh, practicing some task on on uh, on your Jupyter, on your Python, and share on GitHub. So what you can do, there are like sites called UCI, machine learning data sets, UCI. You can go and take some data, real data. You can just practice your coding, Python coding, and just put on your GitHub, share with public, take the feedbacks, and keep improving. So there are multiple, there are many, many real questions, uh, many real data on the UCI. You can take data and just play with that. And simple way of joining machine learning that key, you just pack, jo just join this uh, uh, some kind of you know forums, uh, practice on the data sets, and put on GitHub, share with public, take response, keep improving, keep improving. If you are good enough, if you are original in writing codes or, or, or writing the ML kind of steps, you will certainly get a call from uh, you know industry or, or some some person for hiring. That is guaranteed. The best way I can say that key job, uh, just practice with the data set, no matter what background you have, and practice your Python skills, uh, ML skills, and uh, join the forums, get some uh, get some questions answers, and uh, yeah. Okay, great. So it doesn't matter. In fact, it doesn't matter do you want to go into machine learning or some other technology. You need to build projects. You have to build something so that you can show to people, right? That's that's one thing very really important. Those days are gone when certification was enough, right? Yeah. It's more about true. implementing stuff. Yeah, true, very true. Yeah, great. In fact, we have a next question from Sumen Das, and the question is I'm doing it on R. Will it be a bad option for future? Okay, yeah, it's a tough question to take, but yeah, see, I R has been great, I think, but I think I personally recommend you to switch to Python because Python has much more, you know, much more, I mean, powerful libraries. Because finally, you have to do some tasks, right? You do on NLP or computer vision or basic ML tasks, and even everything, Python has the best libraries, you know. R has been great, but you know, for last two years, there is not much libraries, you know, in, in R which is added there. But you know, the instructors who have learned R, they're teaching R. I know that they, they may be in for the industry for the some coaching classes because they may have learned R, you know, four years back, and they are trying to teach the same thing. But I personally recommend uh, because of the libraries and because of the powerful libraries in Python, please uh, start practicing the Python. OK, great. Um, in fact, the amazing thing is, OK, my webcam is suddenly off. What's wrong? OK, something went wrong there. Yeah, so uh, where was I was talking about? Yeah, so the, the Python language, right? In fact, R is also good. Uh, people were using that before. And now Python is getting famous. For well, one reason, it is very easy to learn. So even if you have new people want to get into machine learning, if they prefer Python, 
they will be making some more libraries. So the amount of libraries which will be coming in future will be more on Python than on R. That's what my prediction is. So at this point, R is good, but maybe in future, it's good to move to Python. Even Navin will yeah. be. Yeah, R has been great basically, but you know, 2014, 15, it was a great option. But I think 17, 18, I think Python has taken the edge. So I believe. Okay, great. Uh, okay, question which is uh, my personal favorite. You know, you know, whenever someone asks me about machine learning, uh, so my my point is, do you know maths? <laughs> if you are good with maths, yeah. then you can think about machine learning. And yeah. we have the same question here. So what are the yeah. math concepts needed for machine learning? Yeah, one of the base questions, by the way. So see, maths is like insight. So what happens, like you can control things. You know, you can have control over the machine learning, the result. You can really feel that it's going to happen this way, you know. Suppose you you have a hundred machine learning libraries. You have a many functions for classifications for regression, but you know you, you don't know exactly which thing can work better, right? But if you know the math or stats a little bit, what happens? You will get more edges. You know you don't, don't need to play with the uh, twenty options of classification uh, way. Just you know you can feel it that key, I will apply the random forest. It may give best result here. If I apply this. Uh, this tree it will work better here so you know you can feel those things boosting approach random forest approach so the feeling the inside will be more if you know math and stats but without math stats you can learn how to code how to build the classifier and uh, regression and all uh, but i suggest that we keep adding some math and stats knowledge as well little, because it will increase your insights but you can do without that also. I personally feel that you can do without that also. But you have to spend more time in, in trying many approaches and see which can work better. OK, great. Uh, the next question is, what's the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Are this OK, as we discussed, deep learning is a subset of the machine learning. It's a part of the machine learning, right? Deep learning is just like understanding and the copying the human brain network architectures. So the way we have human brain, like we have our neurons, neurons gets fired, right? Then we go to the next next, next set of the layer, layers of neurons. So neuron layers, it gets fired, go to the next neurons, and finally it take decision, yes or no. Suppose I want to jump. Suppose I can see the snake right now. I can see the snake right now. But should I jump or not, the decision will come at the last layer of your brain. So brain has a neurons layers. Neurons gets fired, then then again fired, then it say jump. So the way human brain decides in the same way we try to under, do in the our machine learning thing. So deep learning is just a copying the brain network architectures for doing the machine learning task. Machine learning is the sub, superset, and deep learning is subset. Like suppose decision tree or regressions, they are not deep learning. They are the basic machine learning models. So all these decision tree, random forest, ADA boost, boost, whatever, regressions, multi, all, all are typical normal ML task. But deep learning is less like a, you know, MLP, multi-layer perceptron, CNN, convolution neural networks. So these, these are the deep learning networks. So deep learning is subset of the machine learning. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, one more question, which is best books for machine learning other than yours. So they know everyone that you have written a book and that's great. But let's say if they want to start from base and they want to learn everything. So what are the book, which is your favorite books I can recommend? Uh, book is A. Geron. So A. Geron is a book uh, author. So they have hands-on, I think hands-on machine learning and all this book is there. And author name is A. Geron. A. Okay. Get on. A. Get on. Let hands on, hands on, yeah, hands on machine learning. And this is the title like, of a book. Yeah, that's right. So, hands on machine learning. So, let me just share the Amazon link on the chat window so that everyone can. Yeah. That. So, I'm sharing the link in the chat window, the book. 
recommended work. Okay, next. Uh, so we have we can take two more questions, right, uh, Naveen? If you are free. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Okay, great. Uh, okay, I can see. Okay, apart from IT, does ML capable? Oh, sorry, ML applicable in mechanical engineering applications like car? Yeah, I think ML is a new fabric, so is applicable everywhere. So what, if you do something, it can enhance the way it does, you know, it improve efficiency. So much, even in mechanical engineering or, or car, or autonomous vehicle, we can build the smart engine, we can build the smart driver, we can understand the left lane, right lane and all. So what, so anything which you do, which can be done through AI again. So always there is a scope of using the ML for doing differently. Yes, there is always a scope of using the ML for doing differently, a better way. Okay, great. In fact, we got a super chat from Arbaz and the question is, can I get ML job after BCA? I will do a course on machine learning and also bootcamp on live projects. So maybe the question is more of, is a degree required? I mean, is it BTEC yeah. or engineering required for machine learning jobs? So see, personally, I feel that the, all the startup, all the great guy in the market, they don't care, care about certifications. I don't care about certifications while hiring any person. Uh, so what happens, people see like, what you have contributed to the open source community. Like you have done something on GitHub or on some kind of open source tools. So if you add some package, if you put your on GitHub, solving some new problems, solving some problems differently. So if you showcase your talent on GitHubs or other sources and contribute to some libraries, that is the best way to join the ML world. And I guarantee that all the, rec all the recruiters now following the GitHubs and Stack Overflow and other forums to, to track the best talents. No one care about certifications. But this is just, it's like give a give an incentive for interviews, but for real hiring, the talent matters. The GitHub contributions, those contributions matter a lot. So please contribute, please, please uh, have some data, private data put on GitHub, share with us, share with the big groups, and we, you will get the job easily. Okay, so there's one question which is not exactly a proper question, just to just to rephrase that. So the question is, when you say AI, so what are the components are there in AI apart from machine learning? Good question. So AI, you see, AI is like artificial. So AI is, if you suppose you do something by logic. So I say that if you if this happens, so this would happen, right? So that means you are putting on logic. So logical way also you can solve some problem. So logical solving way uh, is not the ML or DL. So machine learning is learning from data or experiences without any preconceived logic. But AI can have logic based deduction as well. So you can create a logic and take some decisions that is AI, but that is not ML. So AI is a super set of ML. So something which is logic-based de uh, derivations or logic-based deduction, that is a normal AI, but that is not machine learning at all. So learning from data is machine learning or logic-based deduction is AI, but not ML. Okay, I'm just missing that. Uh, I think I just missed that, Naveen. Audio is missing. Hello. Uh, yeah, now I listen. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the question is for data science and machine learning. Are they same or I mean, can do we have a combination in between? So data science is not very well defined word, but still, let like, it has a it has a machine learning, it has data visualizations, data analysis, data exploration part. So data science is a, is a big thing, which try to understand the actual phenomena, right? Using the machine learning, stats, uh, data uh, exploration, and data visualizations part. So data science is a, is a big word, which can cover many things. 
to help the industry to understand the phenomena but machine learning is something like learning from data it can be a bit different thing but there is a big overlapping in this machine learning and, and the data science okay great so that's some that's a that's a you know it's there are a lot of questions which are actually very ambiguous uh we don't, we don't have a perfect answer to everything but uh, i'm trying to skip some questions uh, one of the question is okay before that question i i want everyone to hit like if you are enjoying this session because i can see a lot of people are joining and going out but you're not hitting that like button so hit that like button everyone okay so the question is about uh, you know in this world now a lot of people want to learn new stuff and they want to learn it for free uh, yes i know but some reasons why i want to want people want to learn for free so if if someone want to learn machine learning or deep learning for free do, can you give a path and uh, let's say yes we have amazing courses available online we have amazing books available we have classroom available but some people don't want to spend money they want to learn everything for free the way i have learned java i learned it for free but it took me some time to learn it so let's say what if, what will be your suggestion how to learn something for free if you want to get into machine learning so if you have will power you don't need to pay any money by the way so there are nice github courses already available which discuss every part of machine learning which discuss the every part of data science you just need to follow them and and solve your own doubts so ask on the forums regarding your doubts or, or google it right so it's all about will will power if you have will power to study anyhow you can read through the github codes you can understand you can have confusion you can just go to the forum ask the questions so if you have will power to follow the githubs or quora or some uh, stack overflow and some other forums you don't need any course any certification no need to pay any money but you must have will power to go through all these thing and analyze it and if possible have some guide also who can at least track your you know growth and recommend you the next path that is the best way without paying any money to join the machine learning world okay that's great so that means you can learn anything for free doesn't matter is it machine learning or stuff like that yeah true okay i have never, never paid any money by the way so i no certification nothing i have done for the last 5 years i have been working in many companies and yeah please sorry so self learning is the best learning right <laughs> yeah but okay. it needs a lot of will power that is the only difference yeah okay so we will take one last question or maybe yeah one last question that is a super chat from shubham uh, and the question is uh, upgrade manipal diplomas versus mtech in india so My basically <laughs> it's more commercial oh question if i say something then it's all about you know trying to refer something so it's like you know commercially i mean i should not want to recommend anyone but yeah yeah i mean upgrade is, is doing good as i know and uh, i don't comment uh, on other thing because it's not right for me to but upgrade is doing good as i can say okay and versus mtech so let's say they want to uh, get into mtech so should i should they go for mtech or any certification programs online so not so, related to upgrade but any certification online certification see i mean there are many thing like uda city and coursera and all but still i told i said tell you already that you should follow uh, some forums some github and just make your own code put pub, on public you know forums and share with public get reviews from public so that is the best way i mean certification will not give you much edge but you can do any certification for uda city or maybe coursera uh, and all but still i feel that finally it, it only it only depends on your will power how much you can put efforts to write your own code put on github and take reviews from public okay and what about mtech is it required to be into ai world? i don't i don't think mtech is required mtech you don't know no one cares about mtech mtech people just you have a skill you can deliver i can hire you simple as simple as that mtech is no one sees the mtech mtech now yeah in fact uh, last year we had this we made a video on this on this thing because apple google they don't want someone who has a a good degree but they want people who have a skill set yes Correct. degree is important but then if you don't have a skill set and if you have a degree it doesn't matter 
But right. if you have a skill set and if you don't have a degree, so they may prefer you over people yes. who have a degree. So totally agree, fully agree. Yeah, great. So yeah, that's it from today's session. Maybe I would uh, request you to again come come on our platform to talk about something else. Uh, in fact, I would also recommend everyone to refer his book, amazing book. For at least you know it's a very layman terms. You can understand different concepts. Uh, yeah, I try to make it very simple. So all the basic things like tensors and and what how deep learning works. The basic thing I focus a lot. It's very much lucid book, comprehensible book for everyone. So I would like to uh, like like to just uh, you to read the book and give me comment like. Okay, great. Uh, so thank thanks, Navin, uh, for joining our today's session. In fact, we can have some more sessions if you're available for sure. Uh, so yeah, let me know your free to free time slots. We can have some more sessions because every day I get a lot of questions on machine learning. This time I will make a Excel file, put all the questions there, and it will hit you with the questions. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it next session. No worry. So I like that session. I mean, I like the energy level. So so good to uh, see the crowd and see your you know management the way you manage everything is awesome. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much for coming on this platform, Naveen. Uh, yeah. See you yeah, next thanks, session. Na thanks, Naveen. From Naveen to Naveen, thanks a lot. <laughs> and uh -huh. one more request: Can you share the PPT if it is if it is uh, allowed to you or because a lot of yeah. people are asking for the uh, link. So if you yeah. can upload on any cloud platform, maybe Dropbox or Google Drive, you can. You can yeah, I, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah, because it. people liked your slides, so they yeah, might want it for it. the use. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dad. thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Have a nice Sunday. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.